right, let's uh, read in our journal about everything that happened. Isabella saw Zachary taking an unknown medicine and, concerned, asked what it is for. He admitted he's suffering from a trauma ever since his parents were killed in a hate crime. Isabella could only offer him a comforting hug, which was very sweet. To lighten the mood, the two decided to cook breakfast afterwards, which we can hear right now. All right. Despite the massive effort to keep the mood light with small chatter, cooking ends up being a mostly quiet affair. Between us, the consistent clapping of the knife against the board and the muffled noise from the television I left running, words have become surprisingly difficult to string together. Not entirely unusual. We've had moments like this before, but definitely unnerving with how things are now. I really wish someone else would come knocking at the door. As pleasant as this is, breaking the ice or keeping a conversation going has never been my forte. That has always been Isabella's or Rebecca's department. Sometimes ashes, although most coming from him border on awkward or embarrassing. Speaking of the guy, he never did call back, and I'm willing to bet my entire yearly salary that he fell right back to sleep after that call. Or... Sorry, Bella, could you... Yep, I got it. The potatoes are almost ready, by the way. I turned down the heat just in case. You might want to check on them, though. Hold on, I'll be right there. Sheesh, wait up. If you keep rapping at the door like that, you'll break it down. Open up, police. Ash. Oh, good. You're awake. He's practicing his police knock. Oh, hello, slidey guys. Ash has already welcomed himself in when I take my eyes away from the oven. He's never been really keen with the notion of courtesies after he's warmed up to you, this guy. All 13 of my locks he broke can attest to that. What the heck, Ash? He's a good fellow, though. Eh? Maybe a tad bit standoffish at first glance, but he's trustworthy. Don't you have work today? I could ask the same of you. Hey, a Z-Man. Oh, God. You're late. Something came up? You need to drop the Z-Man. It's getting old. Mm-hmm. Sorry. I got caught with something at the precinct on the way here. Had to attend to that first before things got out of hand. Hmm. I'd tell you about it, but you know how it can be with those kinds of things. Later, maybe. And you're here because... What? I'm not allowed to say hello? I doubt you're here because of that. And you're not answering my question. You guys are so cute. Ah, my bad, my bad. Forgot to mention that. He called earlier looking for you. Rebecca's worried because you didn't come home last night. You could have called my cell instead. You weren't picking up. Anyway, I'd really hate to cut this little get-together short, but I need to be somewhere else. Okay, bye. Come on, Isabella. Let's get you home. I'll drop you off on the way. Wait, we're going now? For breakfast. But Ashton Frey, we have been making a delicious breakfast, and I'll be darned if this girl doesn't get some food in her belly. He lightly claps a hand on her arm and begins ushering her out of the apartment, throwing a casual wave at me as they pass. Isabella, on the other hand, doesn't appear too fond of the idea. And sure enough, before they can even cross the threshold, she puts a firm foot down, the force alone enough to halt them both and catch the taller man off guard. It would have made for a funny picture. The way Ash almost crashes into her and Isabella giving him an indignant pout over her shoulder. Surprise and confusion are in his face all at once, two things that rarely ever grace it if he can help it. A rare moment, even for our small group. If only I had my camera with me, it's there on the table! Dang. What is it? Zach cooked something. If it's just food, I'll get you something on the way back. He cooked something. If it's just food. What else do you cook, Ash? Ash? Of course it's food, Ash. But the food! It's Zach's cooking! Real delicious food that actually tastes like food. Oh man. Real food? That sounds so good. At least stay and have a bite, please. Zach, help me here! These two, whenever they are in the same room, sometimes it feels like hurting a group of unruly kids instead of talking to two mature adults. I was, I'm wondering... I wonder if they... I'll have to look back on old videos, because to me, Isabella and Ash look like they're shorter than they have been 
in previous chapters, and I'm wondering if that's because your perspective changes with the characters. So because when we were Isabella, everyone was taller because she's only like five foot two or something. And now that we're Zach, who's... Uh, oh, that's the wrong one. How big are you, Zach? Yeah, she, yeah she's 5'2", and Zach's six foot tall. Like, I'm wondering if now, like, we're kind of looking down on them. I might be completely making this up in my head, but if they, if it is true, that's a really cool little detail. <laughs> I think I read this. Uh, I'll read it again, <laughs> just in case. I went on my tirade, I'm like, did I read this? These two, whenever they are in the same room, sometimes it feels like hurting a group of unruly kids instead of talking to two mature adults. One moment they're engaged in a pleasant chit-chat, and the next they're bickering over a minor issue. Frankly, if I didn't know any better, and I have an overactive imagination, I'd say there's something going on. Zack. Zack, come on. Never mind how utterly impossible that idea is. Why? Give me your reasons, Zack. Why? What? Or it might just be me reading too much into things like always. I can already hear Ash's laughter if I so much as suggest such. This, however... I mean, I did cook up a feast. I'm gonna save just in case. I want these guys to stay for breakfast. Now, I don't know about you two, but I think you guys should really stay. I've already made enough food for all of us, and it'd be a waste. Eh? Ah! Even Ash appreciated that I offered for him to come to stay for breakfast. Nice. Okay, so is this where we started with... Okay, so it moved with... Interesting. Uh, my goodness. Look at where we... Did I really have no more chances to improve my relationship with Becca? <laughs> Becca's the only one I'm doing terribly with. Eh. Alright. Why, I cooked up that special honey glazed <gasps> ham you two keep on yapping about. Honey. Got some scalloped potatoes with onions and cheddar to go with it, too. Oh my goodness, I love scalloped potatoes. The oven timer dings. I shoot the two of them an apologetic look before sauntering over the kitchen, mittens in hand. The sweet smell of the glaze and salty tang of melted cheese wafts through the air as soon as I open the door and take out the two trays inside. The scent immediately fills the entire room, and even with the door and windows open, the mouth-watering aroma lingers. <laughs> it's appealing enough that when I put the dishes down on the counter, another starved stomach protests loudly, followed by a burst of laughter. My head snaps up at the two of them, and I can't keep back the smile at the sight they make. <laughs> Isabella is clinging to the doorframe for support, doubled over with breathless laughter. <clears throat> Ash is the more composed of the two, trying to look unconcerned, but a flush has crept up his neck and cheeks. It's clear whose stomach that came from, and Isabella is not going to let him live this down. <laughs> You're in no place to reject an offer of free food, Frey. Free food, Frey? I wasn't... I wasn't rejecting anything. Mm. Damn it, I just missed a meal, that's all. <laughs> you, if you two get together, you guys are just going to be starving half the time. Aw, oh, he's flustered. No. Shut it! Those guys at the precinct said it was urgent. Somebody has to be responsible for it. Well, aren't you precious? Right. You know, if you keep laughing like that, you'll burst. I'm sure it won't be as bad as your stomach, suddenly rumbling like a starved. Cue Isabella's stomach. I kiddos, play nice. <laughs> I... It's gonna get cold if we keep this up. I... Ash, you gonna stay? Might as well, since Scaredy Cat's so hell-bent on staying. Mmm, I'm sure it's not for this delicious scallop potatoes. For breakfast. A hearty meal! Look at these guys. We eventually settle down after the food has been served. The jives replaced by another round of friendly chatter, mostly about what's on the news the night before. There is, however, a conscious effort to avoid mentioning what's currently on the headlines. The dead is never a good topic to talk over food and polite company. This case in particular. The wounds are too fresh, too soon. 
I'd likely avoid it as well if I were in her position, and someone I personally knew passed away in a gruesome manner like that. I mean... <laughs> considering what happened to your parents, it's... nearly as bad as getting ripped apart by a ghost lady. Though perhaps the closest we got to broaching the topic is when the infamous mansion is brought up again. But even then, we are careful, Ash and I. We keep the conversation light and avoid bringing up her late business par partner. It's the least we could do. The rights? Yeah, they're planning to move in soon. In fact, they already have a housewarming party planned. It's why they wanted us to rush the papers. They wanted to send the invitations out as soon as possible. Oh, now I get it. Get what? Remember what I told you last night about the new clients? Vaguely? Sorry. I was a little out of it yesterday. Was it the photo shoot? Yep. It's actually for the one you sold. Ermin. Erma. Something. <laughs> Erma. When you put it that way, I suppose it makes sense why my boss wants me to prioritize the couple. They can have those documents rushed at just a snap of their fingers. And they're more influential than I initially thought. <laughs> and I guess my boss is expecting a lot more from this project than I expected. Hope I can live up to it. Well, it shows your boss has great confidence in you, because he just sent you. Your photographs are more than good enough, Zack. You'd probably win an international award if you let yourself. Ma'am Hana's easy to please, too. As long as you're good at following instructions. Easier said than done. Different clients have different tastes, after all. Still, a week? I don't think that's possible. You haven't met the rights. Now that you mentioned it, yeah. They wanted everything finished at the earliest. To be honest, it's not unheard of, but... But it's still fish... weird. Fishy, Mr. Detective. Still weird, yeah? A slip of the tongue. Still barely noticeable to someone who's already familiar with Ash's ways, yet in this moment it's impossible to miss. I showed him a curious glance, but he ignores it. Are you... I don't know if I've voiced this opinion before. Or this thought before. But is Ash investigating the rights? Is that what's happening? Because he keeps asking questions about it. He's very defensive about it. And now he just said, well, that's fishy. Mm, I'm watching you, Ashton Frey. Rather pointedly. I can't exactly say it's like that. Where I'm just the middleman, after all. As much as I want to comment on it, I only know what's on the surface, not the in and outs. It's just that BRC and my boss are more hands-on with the legal stuff this time. Despite having a separate department dedicated to it. Maybe Mr. Wright helped with it too. They have their own legal team for this, don't they? Well, they should have one. Especially for a big property like this. They have, but like I said, it's off our hands. Rose and I don't handle this stuff in the office. If anything, to me, this just means I'll be able to send the rest of the funds to Papa's treatment earlier. <sighs> I guess that makes a whole lot of sense. Officially off our instant noodle diet, aren't we? Ash, has anyone ever told you that you have an uncanny way of ruining the mood? Her eyebrow in the CG. <laughs> what? I was just saying. A few more months of stuffing your face with those, and I'm sure you'll start to look like a noodle cup. Rude. <laughs> uh, that's a pretty picture. At least I don't live off convenience store food. Or make poor unassuming pressure cookers explode. What? How did you... <laughs> oh, come on, Zach. S sorry. It just came <laughs> up while we were cooking earlier. Revenge. I'm impressed, Ashton Frey. You even made it to the news. A one-time thing. And it wasn't as big as you seem to be imagining. I mean, if the news talked about it. Oh, sure. Let's all pretend that one time you almost set my apartment on fire didn't happen, too. Hey, that was an accident. You were making a salad, Ash. How do you pull that off? Can we please move on to a different topic? There's no fire involved with salads. I mean, unless you're cooking some meat to go into it, but usually you do that beforehand. Then you just throw it in. No? It helps. The casual talk, the harmless teasing, the mundane story is interesting enough to let time pass unnoticed. By the time lunch ends, the shadows are no longer at the forefront of my mind. If it's the same for Isabella, for whatever for whatever troubles her, I can never tell. These things, the anxiety, the fear, they ain't easily seen, ain't easily forgotten after all. 
You go on ahead. I've got a few things I need to ask Zack. I'll be downstairs in a minute. Confusion briefly flashes in her eyes as she catches the keys he tosses over, but he doesn't give her an answer and waits for her to go ahead. How sure are you I won't be driving away with your Shirley? You don't even have a license! Do you even know how to? Papa taught me how. I'm probably a better driver than you. See you later, Zack. Thanks for the food. <laughs> Always has to have the last word, don't you? Yes. You're welcome. I'll send you the recipe for the potatoes tonight. Ooh, please. A grin is back on her face when she leaves and closes the door behind her. For a little while after we're left alone, Ash goes wholly quiet, listening, waiting for her remaining footsteps in the hall to fade. The earlier amusement is gone from his face, replaced by what I can only describe as trepidation. I know that look all too well. When he's like this, he's expecting shit about to go down at some point soon. That wasn't very nice, Ash. What was there with Isabella earlier? You're usually subtler with your questions. They hired you. Hired me who? Yeah. Don't change the subject yet. What's really going on here? The Wrights. Luke and Hannah Wright. You said your next gig is with them. Yes, it's called work, Ash. Is that what this is all about? Just be careful around them. You have no idea what you're dealing with when it comes to that couple. Especially when you're all vague. I'd rather you stay as far away from them as possible, but you're already here. Isabella's their real estate agent. <sighs> Seriously, of all the people in Luxburn. Okay. <laughs> I guess I'll just have to take your word for it. He nods, claps a comforting hand on my back, and turns to leave without another word. He's never been good with those. More often he fumbles with what he wants to say, but his actions alone are enough to tell me how grateful he is for the trust. He reaches for the knob as soon as he gets to the door, but doesn't turn it. Instead, he looks back and gestures with his head towards the table. I don't need to follow his line of sight to know what he's going to ask about. He's likely taken notice of it the moment he entered the room. The pills. You back on those? I haven't seen you taking them in a year. Yeah, I kinda had to. It got worse after the film fest. The dreams, that is. I hope it wasn't the letter. I, I don't think I'll be doing that again anytime soon. I heard about that. Don't drop it, though. You don't want Becca scolding you. She actually enjoyed the movie you made, and she's hard to please. Ouch. Consider that a small victory. <laughs> you don't have to tell me. She already did. Rebecca and Bella both gave me an earful <laughs> after I said the opposite. Promised them I wouldn't, but you can never tell. Hopefully, once I feel better, I'll be able to think about it properly. Poor Zach. Speaking of Bella, she didn't open up to me, but... Maybe with you and Rebecca. Yeah, I'll try. I can't promise anything, but I'll talk to her. Thanks. That's all I'm asking. And don't be yourself. This time, when he reaches for the door, he lets it close fully behind him without glancing back. Alright. Now what? Look at that! Ashton arrived to fetch Isabella hours later, but she didn't want to leave after all the food they prepared. In the end, Ashton acquiesced and stayed. The Wrights and Zach's upcoming gig were the few topics touched during their talk over breakfast. A mild draft sweeps into the room as I close the door behind him, slightly disturbing the papers on the nearby fridge. A lone note flutters by my feet, the letters on the surface glaring at me with mute intensity. Ermengard Mansion, H. Wright, 11 a.m. For luxury living. After Ashton's warning, they all hold a different meaning now. Ominous. Are you humming that song from your dreams? The next two days rush by in a blur, altogether leaving a collective mess of work suddenly piling up and new unexpected acquaintances, or friends. Depends on how you look at it, really. Either way, I'm stuck developing these photos at three in the morning to reach a deadline set by an over-eager art director. Don't get me wrong, Julius is good, has a vision, and knows what he wants, but damn, he can be too enthusiastic sometimes. Doesn't matter when you couldn't sleep anyway. Aww. There's nothing new in it, of course. After years of working as a freelance photographer, it's simply something I've grown used to. 
Get to know people, build a client base, do good work, and cash in some late hours if need be. Rinse and repeat. It certainly takes a while to get some footing on the field, but it's the kind of thing that pays off in the long run as long as you keep at it. Given enough time, you might end up with big names on your client list. Names like the Wrights, in particular. I never did pay much attention to them, but it's virtually impossible not to hear about them when a local news channel or paper has something to say on their name. A party here, an acquisition there. Sometimes it's a new business venture. Other times it's the everyday gossip that typically follows popular people like them. Not in a million years did I ever imagine I would end up working for such a high-profile couple. And between that and the fuss that comes with, it leaves me no time to ponder over whatever happened to Isabella, or why Ash is so adamant we keep away from the pair. They do seem like the good folk, though, despite the whole fame thing. Sure, there was a rumor running around years ago about him being involved in some business scandal. But just like every gossip blown out of proportion by the media, nothing came of it, and eventually it simply died down. Much is definitely left to be said for the husband, but I doubt a woman like Miss Wright would pick him if he doesn't have any good points at all. Miss Wright. Hana herself, though. She ain't particularly bad the way the press makes her out to be. Aw, oh, she's so cute! The tabloids had it all wrong, that's for sure. For someone born with a silver spoon in her mouth? Well, she ain't exactly what I was expecting. Among other things, the newfound friendship is what I least expected from her, but here we are. Although, with a life as public as the rights, no doubt it's the woman who often gets the crappy end of the stick. I can't help but feel sorry for her. She's... A real nice person when given the chance. Heck, she might have even ended up friends with Rebecca and Isabella, too, if they weren't living worlds apart. I mean, she is very friendly with Becky. Probably. The beep quickly pulls me back before my thoughts travel any further. In one practice motion, I carefully place the wet print I'm holding on a drying rack and amble over my makeshift dark room to get the last photos from the water bath. Inside the converted broom closet, the film processor lets out another soft clack before going on its standby mode. At its mouth, a lone photograph sits on the tray, barely visible with the lack of light. It's the last one tonight for the set Miss Wright requested. I don't usually make this a habit. Giving away stuff, that is. It's bad for the business, no matter how well-intentioned or generous you are. This exception, however... She did treat me well, and was a pleasant companion all throughout the shoot, because I didn't continue teasing you, Zach. Even if she didn't ask, I would have probably given her a few prints just for the hell of it. Miss Wright ain't such a bad subject matter to begin with. And maybe this is just me, but for someone who has everything at the palm of her hands, all the money in the world, a loving husband, and a plenty big mansion to call home, she's... lonely. She doesn't just appear like it. It shows in the tone of her voice, how she moves, and most certainly in her smiles. Always hidden behind the glamour for the world to never see. Sometimes... Sometimes for people like her, small things like these helps. A little reminder that the world can be kind too. Water drips from the paper as I blindly pick it up and gently lay it on another tray, holding a decent amount of photo flow. A few seconds under the solution is all it needs before it's ready for drying. No good rushing this last one, even if my body's already screaming for some decent snooze. My hand fumbles for the light switch, moving towards it with familiarity, while I fish for a squeegee among the mess of tools on a drawer with the other. The bulb flickers twice before its uh, glow settles and casts a soft light in the tiny space. When I glance back down, squeegee in hand, ready to finish the process and finally call it a night. Is this the picture you took when the ghost was choking her out? Because I just remembered that. What on earth? Uh, well, that's interesting. Hmm. So from our perspective, the ghost lady was behind her choking her, but in this, like... It's almost like the ghost and her becoming one. Ugh. That's terrifying. Blurred and distorted beyond recognition, rather. 
The area completely smudged over, leaving no trace of the same sweet smile the good woman carried in all the previous prints. Damn, that was too careless. A common mistake to make, of course, if one is negligent enough to pick a newly processed photo in the dark like I apparently did. It has happened before. Loads of times, actually. But I still can't help but feel a small pang of frustration over one mistake a newbie would likely make. With a sigh, I reach up for the switch again, intending to develop a new one from scratch. It could pass off for one of those supernatural pictures they show on TV, though. <laughs> <laughs> a memory clicks. One cursory thought in the sea of many, and a short yet distinct second from the day before. A glimpse is all I got, but it's enough to burn the image in my mind. There was a shadow. That's more than a shadow. No. A woman with her brains coming out. In her 20s or early 30s, maybe? How did you get that from that? But with how far gone her flesh alone has become, it's not possible to tell at first glance. The skin itself has already taken a sickly pale color, rotten in most parts, blood dripping from every open gash and lesion on her body. Bony hands grip Miss Wright's neck like a noose, staining the skin underneath with a vibrant shade of scarlet. Nothing but malice fills the gleam in her eyes. Zachary! Not for me, but for Miss Wright. Zack, is something the matter? I mean, it's... I'm gonna wait till I get off the screen and then I'm gonna talk through a theory. Oh, no, no, there, there, there's nothing wrong. I... I just remembered something I saw. Uh, let's get back to the pictures. Can you move a bit more to the left, yeah? Okay, that's that's. Fine. I just didn't want to hear that. Ah, 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 ah. While I'm trying to formulate my thoughts. <laughs> so. Oh, that music. Um. So, I'm, I'm sure you guys have noticed that Hana and Luke look a lot like the original Ermengarde couple that had the mansion. Like, the ones in the stained glass windows and the paintings. They look a lot like them. So maybe the ghost... We saw her in the intro before she became a ghost. I'm, I'm wondering if she was a servant? And... Something went on between her and the mistress of the house. And because Hana looks like the mistress, the ghost is particularly interested in Hana, it seems, so far. That's just my current thought process on the whole thing. Because when we first meet the ghost, it's in that attic room. And that looks very much par for the course for, like, a servant's room. So I'm wondering... If maybe that's, that's, that's my current thought process anyway. What's in the journal? With the scary music, Ugh. Uh, some of Hannah's shots from the photo shoot the day before came out distorted after Zachary developed them. He would have almost dismissed it as human error if he hadn't remembered a chilling memory from yesterday's shoot. I guess if you develop that same picture over and over again and it's the same, it's not human error. The memory alone is enough to make me wretch. I brushed it off then. A trick of the eye, I told myself, or a product of the heat. Can you imagine if heat made you see things like that? <laughs> the weather has been unexpectedly warm recently, so it shouldn't be too surprising for such things to happen. And, well, blaming this on the usual fatigue and overworked brain, the weather, or an amateur error on my part is far more convenient. It makes a whole lot of sense than what the small voice inside my head whispers. The same tiny voice that only makes itself known when something's afoul. The same one that lent a curious ear to Isabella's worries about the mansion. And with each second I spend staring at this photograph, the murmurs in my head only grow louder against my ears. Someone has to know. Hmm. Uh, I'm gonna save. I'll just save over that. I think if we're going to do Hana's route with Zack, I'll show the photo to her then, but I'm going to go with Ash because we're not we're not going to do this right now. 
Ash will give me flack for this. He will. I mean, maybe if enough of his friends are like, look, there's a ghost girl, he'll eventually start to believe in it. I can already hear what he's going to say about this the moment I bring it up. Hell, before he even sees anything, I'll wager. The guy is a skeptic through and through, and it'll take more than my account for him to even consider this. But we got Isabella, and now you. But when you've been there, seen something enough to raise the hairs at the back of your neck and leave you wanting to flee or hide, what he thinks is the least of my concerns. I am no hero. That's a title best reserved for someone else. Still, if this will help him change his mind, it's worth a try. Isabella's gone and done the same thing, didn't she? Outside, the sun has yet to rise. I've still got a few hours before dawn. Good enough time to mull over how I'll go about this with him. Plenty of space to check if I'll get the same result if I redo the process again. The film processor hums back to life at my touch. The light switch gives out a soft click, and darkness embraces the small closet again. Somehow those urban legends don't sound so silly now. Sometimes I wish Ash would make himself easier to find. 24 messages, 13 phone calls, and one visit to his flat later, I still have no idea which rock in Luxburn he went off to hide under again. The guy has his own place, but refuses to stay in it. Has his own phone, but doesn't answer any of his calls or give any indication he's gotten my messages. Most of the time, he'll just show up on my front door. Sometimes in the middle of the night, complaining how uncomfortable it is to sleep at the back of his Shirley, his car. As if the old couch in my flat is any better. Nothing new from him, though. But a bit frustrating, really. There's the police precinct, of course. Then again, he's not there most of the time, either. And if that's also true for today, he's likely out on another stakeout. There's nothing much to do for me but await, if that's the case. Let's just hope I'm lucky enough today. While Luxburn is a relatively peaceful city, boasting a low crime rate, its precinct stays abuzz with activity. As soon as I open the glass front doors, murmurs coming from the people waiting in the lobby welcome me. Officers can occasionally be seen shuffling in and out of the rooms, greeting civilians with a casual smile and a polite nod. Some, though, look a little worse for wear, like their receptionist who looked at me with much disdain the moment I arrived. Thankfully, I won't have to deal with him today. Before I can even step in, Ashton's voice, though low, comes from the hallway adjacent to the lobby. Not even for just one minute? No. The case was dismissed, remember? You were the one handling that case. Dang. <sighs> if you want access to those records, you've got to ask Chief. I was taken off it before shit went to hell. Why do you even bother? Even Professor Clark seems to have given up on that. A case involving Professor Clark. Hmm. Well, I... <sighs> Never mind, you won't understand. Right. I know you owe Professor Clark a lot, but the right guy isn't just someone you mess with. Interesting. Okay, that actually explains a bit about why Professor Clark was a little... right? Do you mean Luke and Hana right? He did seem a little... pensive? I don't know if pensive is the right word, but... it bothered him. Okay. So the big case that Ash is working does seem to involve the rights. And he's so doggone <laughs> going down that path because he, Professor Clark, is involved with that somehow. I wonder, hmm. Well, a little bit more of the puzzle pieces are falling into place. They've got the money. Who knows what else gets swept under the rug with them involved. <laughs> that takes a special kind of ignorant not to know. And a smart person to know which boundaries he can't cross. You're a bright guy, you'll figure it out. In any case, I've got to get going. Another missing person case on my hand. Benjamin on the front desk looks like he's about to maul someone after the fourth one yesterday. Murders, people missing, what a time to be alive. <laughs> Man, I miss the old Luxburn. Spoilers, those people that are missing are probably murdered as well. You and me both. I'll see ya. Gonna go grab some lunch. He notices me first as soon as he enters the lobby and pauses. Confusion briefly crosses his face until I fish out the phone from my pocket and wave it up. Frowning, he pulls his own mobile out, wordlessly fiddling with it for a few seconds before sighing heavily. There ain't any annoyance in him when he glances up, though. 
Only mild exasperation and what might be a hint of amusement. Stop taking pointers from Isabella. <laughs> this is gonna get old soon. Shut up. At least use your phone properly. It's an alarm clock, a good note-taking device, a halfway decent camera, and maybe a music player too. If I'm being nice. Dang. What else do I need it for? I don't know, keep it in contact maybe? When he merely shrugs, I know I've struck a chord. He's far from holding a piece of technology in contempt, of course. Ash has always been nothing but practical from the start, and technology is useful. Only, when he gets too focused on one thing like a case he's handling, he tends to forget there are other things around him. A little reminder and a nudge in the right direction can get him a long way. I've got an email on that social media site the girls roped us into joining. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense! Also, you've got an account before any of us had one. <laughs> I saw when you joined. Ash. For policing purposes? Anyway, why are you here? I thought you have something scheduled today. Or was that yesterday? That was yesterday. Look, about that. There's something I want you to see. He stops me with a tap on my shoulder, walks past me straight to the door, and gestures with his head towards their very irked receptionist when I raise an eyebrow in question. Over lunch. I haven't eaten anything since last night, and Benjamin there doesn't really like loiterers around here. Sorry, Benjamin. Wordlessly, I follow after him, but not after sending the poor guy behind the table an apologetic smile. Everyone just likes to eat at this place. As expected, he takes a seat in the farthest corner of the cafe. A good way from the window, but easily allows a view of who comes and goes. Secluded enough not to be disturbed by the lunch hour rush or be overheard by a curious bystander. If I didn't know this is lunch he invited me to, I would have automatically assume I got dragged into another stakeout. After years of knowing him though, this has simply become one of the many habits he has I've gotten used to. Food arrives minutes later. Ooh, is that quiche? A slice of their vegetarian quiche for me. Meanwhile, Ashton has opted for a cup of coffee plus a gracious serving of... I'm sorry. Excuse me. I need to talk to your barista. Barista? Who... Who did this? <laughs> who... Who is the artist of this? <laughs> I need to know! I need to find this place. I want my face on a cup of coffee. Wait. <laughs> How do you do this? That's the gloves, the fingerless gloves. Dang. Also, this looks incredible, but for lunch, my dude? Whew. You having cake for lunch? He shrugs and then proceeds to dig in without even a hint of remorse. Frankly, it's like seeing a child get his Christmas present early. Don't tell Becca, I'll get near full. You should because you always give her heck. It's just for today. Sure. You should listen to her, though. The kind of work you do, you'll need to eat something other than sweets. Yeah, something that'll actually stay with you. I don't want to see you drop dead in front of my apartment again. I told you, just this once. Have you been hanging out with Becca lately? You're beginning to sound like her. Were you there for breakfast today? You know I was hanging out with Becca lately. Nah, just for some recipes. Hey, that wasn't today, but it was, it was yesterday. <sighs> but she has the right to worry, you know? It's like she's taking care of two kids. One bitches on sweets, while the other on cup noodles. <laughs> it's true. At least Bella knows how to cook. Hey, I can at least boil something. You couldn't even make a salad, dude. Wait, that's easy, right? I mean, you just put water in and... No, don't even think about it. You destroyed your own kitchen once by sticking a pressure cooker on it. I think my sister is a whole lot better than you. And this is coming from someone who has no other choice but to eat or cooking for some time. To be fair, he genuinely appears offended at the last remark. Hate will be too strong of a word to describe how Sis and him usually interact whenever they're in the same room. Though whatever appropriate word it is, I can say with most certainty that the feeling's mutual for both. Ash thinks she nags too much, while Sis thinks he's a trouble magnet I should stay away from. They're... both technically right on their assessments. How's your sister, by the way? Still bullying white guys? What should I say? <laughs> She's married to one now, or you're the one who started it? <laughs> um... <laughs> Gosh. I don't want to be like... 
You started it with my sister. But, I don't know, married to one now just also sounds funny, but maybe it'll genuinely shock him. Let's see. You do know she's married to one now. Yay! All right. Grand. I hope she doesn't end up poisoning him with her cooking. Pot calling the kettle black? She can't be better than me. <clears throat> Actually, she is now. They're planning to start a restaurant sometime in the future. Dang, that redemption arc. I was bedridden for days after eating some of the stuff she whipped up. And now you're letting her cook for other people? I'm not letting her do anything. She's her own woman, man. Don't exaggerate. It was just for one day, and you're the one who refused to leave your apartment. You should come by, though. The sis gave birth a few days ago. Girl. Oh, awesome. I've only seen the pictures. But I might visit some time after everything settled down. Too many backlogs to go through for now. I want to see pictures. No way in hell. She'll just find something to criticize again. Last time, it was Shirley. He makes a show of being utterly mortified, though I'm quite sure he doesn't mean any of that. He might not say it straight out, but I'm pretty sure he's enjoying the small visits whenever he can. Something about it reminds him of his own family. Sort of like making up for the one he never got back after his parents separated. Oh no, I'm gonna have like heart breaking stories on Ash's route too, gosh darn. Sore spot, that one topic. One thing he never ever brings up in any conversation if he can help it, and I've never seen the need to be nosy. There are some wounds you're just not meant to open. And for the both of us, the sentiment goes the same way. As if you ain't already on a shit list. You're just afraid of her. In your dreams. But I'll think about it. Can't just drop this thing at the moment. His change in tone is subtle, but his aggravation over the matter hangs completely palpable in the air. Still no closer? The opposite, actually. There's been some... slip-ups here and there. Careless mistakes, and let's just say I'm waiting for him to make another one. Luke. Gotcha. What about you? How are things on your end? Okay, so you're investigating Luke more so. <sighs> All piled up on top of the other. But I can manage. Still recovering from the expenses for the movie, so the surge in new projects helps. Well, there's this one thing. Ooh. Yeah, they all came out the same by the looks of it. The expression on his face grows more puzzled with each photo I spread on the table. There's about eight of them. All of it reprints of the same thing. Miss Wright's distorted head on the photos. He takes a minute to go through each, eyeing the prints warily. The furrow on his brow doesn't ease, even as he gathers all of it into one pile and sets them in one neat stack in front of me with a heavy sigh. Hana Wright? Uh, oh, uh, yeah. How did you- The locket. She never takes it off. Really? Was it a wedding gift? A gift from her mom? Evan's family heirloom. Ah, family heirloom. Gotcha. I won't even think about asking why or how he knows that. If he's investigating them, he'll likely have already dug up every unimaginable dirt on them, including family history. Are you done with your work with them? Yesterday, yeah. It's just a small feature for a magazine. Interviews, photos, standard stuff, nothing big. But see, here's the thing. I don't know how else to put this out there without sounding crazy, but there really is something odd with that place. Tell him, Zach. Remember the letter? <sighs> he drags in a breath, reaches up his nose and pinches it. Like the action alone will help grant him all the patience in the world to continue this conversation. Please tell me this isn't about that again. No, Ash, you've got to listen this time. I am listening, and I can't believe that just came out of your mouth. No, you're hearing, but you're not listening. These are some blurred out photos, and that letter is just a stupid prank. I expected this from Isabella, not you. You're the photographer here. I don't see any need to get worked up over this. I know what you mean, but would you hear me out first? Ash leans back on his seat and doesn't say anything further. He gestures for me to continue with a wave of his hand and patience clearly on his face. Any other person telling him this and he'll walk out without batting an eye. I suppose the only reason he's giving me the benefit of the doubt is because we know each other. Ash, I don't easily buy into these things as much as you do. Yesterday, though, behind Hana. He blinks at that, his eyebrows lifting momentarily before settling into a deep frown. It's like, first name basis? Hana, since when were you on a first name basis with the right missus? Why, why does that even matter? I thought you said this was just a gig. <laughs> don't look at me with those eyes. 
His voice stays level, but the accusation in it is as clear as day. It hits a nerve in me somehow, more than that tone usually does. I do get where he's coming from, but... I mean, it, it's just a gig. Whew. We're smoking ash. Patience can be a tough thing to summon at times. But we didn't get this far as friends if we let our own tempers be the lord of us. Bro, it's really just another freelance work. Bro, it's me, Z-Man. You know me. He eyes me skeptically. The same stare he reserves for people he interrogates. I've been on the receiving end of it before, early in our friendship. Years later, he's already got the unimp unimpressed police look down pat. And there's nothing going on with me and Miss Hana. She was just being friendly. Insisted I call her by her first name. That's all. I wasn't implying any of that. You're not that sort of guy. What were you implying, then? I know, but let's just get that out of the way. The just-in-case elephant-in-the-room scenario, I. She's a married woman. Jesus! Not with the image she presents in public. No, but trust me, she ain't any of the things the tabloid writes about her. Like I read any of those. Oh, don't lie. You must have read every single scrap for the case you're doing. I know you don't, but keep it in mind, will you? Will do. Though I can't promise you'll get off scot-free if she's involved. Man, with how you're acting, it feels like I'm doing a solid for your girlfriend. Not now, Ash. Next time, gosh. Cut, cut, cut that out, will you? And, and, and I'm not asking you to. Besides, what's currently going on here is more important. All right, lay it in. Recounting everything takes the better half of our lunch, but he manages to listen through the entire thing without a snide comment. A feat in itself, actually. Oh, that full body nod. At the end of it, Ash merely nods, takes out his phone, and excuses himself. Off to a far corner of the cafe for some privacy, if you can even afford to have such in a place as public as this. He returns in a little while and hands me a small card. Andrew Clark, PhD, Professor of Psychology and Ethnography, Department of Psychology, College of Humanities and Sciences. A Clark at Lux.edu. I can't stop you if you're willing to believe in this crap. Give this guy a call. You're better off talking to him than me. <laughs> Probably. He's at the public library now if you want to catch him there. He used to be my professor back in the university. Oh, no, I, I don't think that's... Go on. I already gave him a heads up. You know I can't help you out, man. <sighs> well, thanks for nothing, Ash. <laughs> a pleasure as always. Disturbed, Zachary decided to show the photographs to Ashton. During lunch at the coffee house, they briefly discussed Zach's sister before the topic veered on the photos. Refusing to believe his friend, Ashton advised him to talk to Andrew instead, because Ash is such a good friend. He gives my arm a tap and walks off, mumbling about checking back how things are at the precinct. I don't see his face when he leaves, but I know this is his own little way of helping out, despite what he doesn't voice out. Oh, such library. Of all the places, it never crossed my mind I'll end up wandering into the public library today, considering I rarely ever visited. Somehow, there has always been this kind of disconnect between me and books in general. Sure, some of them held my attention in my youth during the brief times of the day I was left to my own with nothing to do. I went through the whole of Grand's collection, as a matter of fact. Read all of them twice or thrice, even. But they never did hold it for long. Most of it never even sticked. Especially after I learned it's simply easier to do things myself if I want to learn stuff. This ain't in the plan in the first place. But after Ashton went through trouble to contact the professor, I can't just ignore it. Nothing but quiet greets me inside, though. I mean, it is a library. Oh, not the typical mum one would associate with a library, but one akin to a hush prior to an impending trouble. Or perhaps I'm just overthinking again. I really like to think I'm just thinking too much about this, that this is just the lack of sleep talking. Regardless, apart from a group of students murmuring in a corner somewhere, the place is free of its usual visitors. All while my footsteps echo in a manner unsettling enough to raise the hairs at the back of my neck. Much to my relief, it does not take me long to find him, being the only occupant in this side of the room. Professor Andrew Clark. I've never personally met the man, but Ash has spoken highly of him several times. In fact, he is Ash's go-to guy when something's troubling him with a case. My steps are unsure as I approach. 
At any rate, he greets me with a warm smile like a grandson he hasn't seen in a long time. Ashton's friend, I take it. Zachary. <laughs> You'll have to forgive this old man if I don't get your name right. Oh no, you got it. It's Zach. Zachary Steele, Professor Clark. He gestures at the empty seat across the table while he returns to his books. The next couple of minutes pass in relative silence as he continues to read and take notes from the pile he's accumulated on the table. Maybe I should have taken a book first before heading here? But before I can even get far into that idea, the professor clicks the book shut and sets it atop the stack next to him. Ashton told me you were hoping to get answers from me. Although I'm not quite sure what I could share, I'll do my best to help. Of course, there are a lot of things I want to ask. How do we get out of this mess is the first among tens, hundreds of concerns in my head. But in the presence of someone I barely know, the thoughts won't easily form. He is nothing but patient, however, and with enough time to mull over, a question finally forms. Do you believe in the paranormal, Professor? It's supernatural, actually. Don't worry. It's a common mistake to make. But they really are two different things. The other one deals with what we can't explain at the moment while the other are things we may not have an explanation to. One deals with what we can't explain. The other is things we may not have an explanation to. Seems like splitting straws to me, but sure. Here. He places a couple of papers in front of me, the very same one he was writing on earlier. A study of Luxburn's supernatural culture in a nutshell. A friend of mine wrote that a few years ago. He took interest in the city after reading about the stories. I have to agree with him here. Even stories dealing with things you don't see with the naked eye can be rife with culture, and this city thrives on it. Just ask the locals. Like ghosts, for example. <laughs> <laughs> Among other things. The interpretation has changed over the years, though. Various religions, for example, have their own version. It might not always be a spirit now. It could be a memory or an imprint, an echo, so to speak. Hmm. Some are born from curses, even. Out of great anger, hatred, or pain, there was this one story. Ah, here it is. Please be the one we need. Another book is pulled out from the stack and placed open atop the papers, while he speaks with such passion that it makes me wonder if some part of him believes these to be true. It is interesting, though, even if I'm personally not a fan of such stories. And soon, hours pass without my notice. In the end, it asks for something to be sacrificed in order to destroy whatever anchors the wraith. A sad tale, that one, but the simplest grudge can bring the ugliest, even in the kindest person, with some people none the wiser. Okay, so it wasn't specific, it's just a story about an echo or a ghost or whatever. Oh, I'm sorry, I just went on. Nah, it's good. Ah, sorry, I need to move. Oh, I'm so stiff. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, there we go. Are you familiar with the Urban God Mansion, though? <laughs> of course. That goes without saying. Who hasn't heard of the local legend? Hmm, in fact, you aren't the first one to ask me about that recently. It's true. Although, word of the mouth is, someone has already bought it. Ah, yeah. The right couple. It was a close friend who handled that sale. So I heard. Well, don't think the house being bought by anyone would stop us from talking about it. What is it about the mansion, then? I just want to ask what you think of it, sir. <laughs> We're going to need more than an afternoon for that, young man. You see, it's the kind that has changed over the years, passed down from one person to the next. Sometimes, it's the Lord William who haunts the place. There are versions where it's the lady of the house. Interesting. But my favorite, a personal favorite, would have to be the ones that followed after the disappearance of the kind daughter. Well, what about these then? There is a moment of hesitation on my part before I pull out Miss Wright's photos and lay them all in front of him. Unlike Ash, though, the professor inspects each print with great interest. That gives me some hope, at least. Hmm, when were these taken? Need some advice, Prof. Just the other day. Do you think those are the same? Perhaps. Perhaps not. There were certainly instances when the film would pick up what the human eyes weren't able to see. But then, it could also have been human error. I didn't edit it in any way. You have my word on that, Professor. They all just came out like that. Then, if it is what you're thinking, I'd strongly advise against doing something reckless and further tangling with them. Accounts about them may be riveting to you, 
Uh, most of it often ends in an unpleasant manner. Oh, I'm sure. What about those people in the house? If there is something in there, shouldn't they know? I'm sure they're already familiar with the legends, but... Some people might deserve it, however. Ooh. What did they do to you? Deserve what, sir? <laughs> oh, oh. He's got those anime glasses. All of a sudden, the tenderness in the professor's eyes disappears, his face becoming unreadable. Did they, like, murder your dog or something? What did they do? <clears throat> As though catching himself, he hastily clears his throat, gathers his books, and rises from his seat. Professor? I'm sorry. I just remember something I neglected to do. You'll have to excuse me, Zachary. Uh, all right. Do you need any help with that? Don't let my looks fool you, son. I can still carry a few hundreds. I've been doing this for years. Uh, I'll see you some other time if you have any other questions. Uh, of course. It was nice knowing you, Professor. He doesn't hear it, however. Curiouser and curiouser. Zachary met with Professor Andrew Clark at the library. The professor shared a few of his favorite stories about the city, including a friend's research about, research about his urban legends. When Zach showed Hannah, Hannah's distorted photos, the professor only warned him not to be reckless, and that some people deserve what's coming for them. In a few short strides, he's out of the library, leaving me and every piece of this whole mess amidst the oppressive stillness. Despite the answers gleaned, more questions surface. If there is even a single way out of this, I hope we find it soon. Get Doctor Strange on the case. The moon is well into the night sky by the time I make it back home. My heavy treads and the sound of traffic outside echoing in my ears, filling the empty room with some semblance of life. Nana would scold me if she ever hears me walk like that. But after today, I really can't give a damn about everything. The mattress creaks under my weight as I unceremoniously flop down on it, and I find myself looking at the paper under my grip. Raise your glasses. Give cheers to the good times. You are cordially invited to the Rice housewarming party. October 23rd, 2016, Friday, 3 o'clock in the afternoon onwards, Ermengarde Mansion. Fancy. An invitation and a request to cover an event. The Rice housewarming party. Tomorrow evening. If only it were that easy, but it'll give me a chance to talk to her. About that thing in their house. I don't think we got the opportunity, at least not from Hannah's point of view. With a sigh, I let my hand fall to the side of the bed along with the invitation. I'll think about it tomorrow, when my head ain't muddled with thoughts of a headless woman and the haunting smiles of a ghost. Belatedly, it occurs to me that the last meal I ate had been the one with Ashton. And an empty gnawing ache makes itself known, but I can't bring myself to stand up. Today was a complete waste of time, and frankly, a disappointment. I don't like this. The lack of certainty, the disquiet, the lack of stable ground to stand on, the part where I do not know what will come tomorrow. Ever since that damn letter, everything has been thrown out of the loop. I wish everything stayed the same. Routine would have been easier to make sense of than this. Closing my eyes, I let the noise from the streets below lull me to sleep. At the very least, that's the one thing that hasn't changed. No, no, not Dreamland again. The melody carries into the hall long before I cross the threshold. Solemn, but gentle and soothing. A reminder of what home is. Pa's firm but meaningful gaze. Ma's wistful smiles. The warm rays filtering through the eaves at sunset. The distinct smell of wet earth and leaves after a long day's rain and our room. The room. Ma and Pa's pride and joy. A place we were once promised several springs ago. Yet... Yet it won't stop. No, wait! Come back! I'll be good this time! Please don't leave! Please stay! The floorboards are cold under my feet more than it usually is. The walls more forbidding than what I'm used to. Farther and farther the room goes. Ma's singing ceases, and Pa... I can't hear, Pa. <laughs> Not above the raucous clanging and the deafening roar of gunshots, nor the screams replacing the comforting soft melodies. There is only the blinding fear. But when the light breaks... Ah! Oh man, things are morphing together. Her skin has already taken a sickly pale color, 
Rotten in most parts, blood dripping from every open gash and lesion on her body. Bony hands grip Hana's neck like a noose, staining the skin underneath with a vibrant shade of scarlet. Nothing but malice fills the gleam in her eyes. A scream ripples through the air and blood. Oh god, now what? My whole body feels distant. Every limb heavy with lead, all unable to move at will. Not even so I can wipe the beads of sweat forming at my temple. The rasping of my breath easily fills the room in the wee hours while I force it back into a steady rhythm. There's a tightness in my chest I can't shake off, my heart pounding against it as if it's about to burst out. Something cold has settled in my legs. Not the usual chill that comes and goes with the passing breeze from the window, but one strong enough to sting, shackle, and leave a frigid sensation creeping up my skin. With every struggle I make, the pressure winds firmly around my legs. Tighter. And tighter. And tighter. All until it becomes too much. Oh no, she's here! My heart stops. Another draft sweeps into the room and brings with it the iron tang of blood. Thick. Suffocating. What do you want me to do this time, game? Filling my nose with a foul, sickening smell as I shift my gaze downwards, and it slowly comes into view. Oh no! I would, like, die right now. Mouth stretched in a hideous smile, and eyes brimming with nothing but madness. The stench of gore taints the air around me, and I can't look away from it. Her. From the terror and death that her uncanny, twisted features alone scream. I try to open my mouth to shout, to ask for any help, but my voice has left my body altogether. All I have is the painful realization that no kind of plea will ever save me from her. Then suddenly the bed dips. the mouse hand over the keyboard I'm like what do you want me to do <coughs> and then she just like reached for my face <sighs> <clears throat> the brutal plunge back into myself jerks me awake there is no air splitting scream no wild thrashing of limbs just a painful constricting awareness that something has wound itself tightly around my neck it's probably our blanket ugh I waste no second pulling it, a blanket, away, but allow myself a few minutes to steady my breathing before getting off the bed. Ugh, I'm so full of air right now. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. One step, two steps, three. Oh, the dreams have gotten worse. Ever since two days ago, no longer are they the small cursory flashes that I'm used to, but vivid ones that linger. I can still feel the blood in my hands, the putrid smell of rotting flesh, the sickening crunch of bones breaking with every movement, and her cold, chilling eyes as they bore into me. <sighs> I draw in one long, ragged breath, and before I know it, I'm walking out the door. Even in the waking world, it reeks. 